idea. I was up for it, but now I'm involved in the media. I think it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Oh, it's gone in the heart of the pocket. What a shot from Capito. He's held his nerve and he's notched up another break and run to take this match to a one rack shootout. It will be Chua to break in the decider. Seven break and runs out of ten racks for Capito. Unfortunately, he won't be breaking in the decider. He's going to sit and hope. Chua gets a messy table. Chua's got to be careful. He doesn't break illegal. Going back to your question about the shootout shot. When I played, when I was on tour, I voiced my opinion quite a lot, surprisingly, to yourself. And I always thought the shootout would be good because I always thought it would be quite unfair. So for in this instance, if Chua was to break and run and Capito doesn't get a shot, which it would be unfair. However, Capito will have done that to many opponents. Uh, in this instance, because the break is laid out to be very easy in this event, the likelihood is a break and run percentage-wise is going to happen more. But when you're using a tough break like what we're seeing at the European Open, that percentage is brought right back down a lot. And I want to see somebody miss the ball, play a bank shot, a jump shot. So now I work on the media side of things. I hate the shootout. Mm, I understand what you mean. But as a player, when I played, I liked it. <laughs> so anyway, back to the match. Chua to break. 10-10. Oh, and he's it's not done break. the cut break how he wanted. It was a little bit flat. Wow. But something tells me that's not the last you'll see of Johan Schwab for this tournament. You don't think Capito clears the table? Something tells me no. Okay. If there was a shootout, we're not going to see what we're going to see now. That's my whole point. Yeah. I want to see this. This is exactly what Pool is about. Can Capito hold himself together? Can he clear the table? Not just pot a long ball in a shootout. I mean, what's Poo, the point of that? Pool fans want to see pool action. Yeah, everybody loves to see a one rack shootout. Yeah. This is why we watch the game. Can he get from the two to that three? And then from the three, he's got to get up table for the four. It's decision time for Capito. Does he try and get real close to the three or is he going to try and find one of them gaps is he playing this hard he is playing so it hard to underrun this two ball landed perfect actually there was a format tournament format in the US I watched before when it's heel heel they play they need a two rack advantage to win the game yeah I mean I've seen that I've played a part in one of them tournaments before but what's the point just play one rack for more drama do you want me yeah well I mean we're sat watching this and we're enthralled you know we're talking about this match we're not even a fan who's watching so the fans watching this and I'm sure there's a few people dotted around the arena obviously it's a closed off event due to the COVID rules but everyone's in this room is watching to see what happens and this is why we want the sudden death rack he had to take a gamble it wasn't so much a bad shot maybe he could have tried and found a gap he took a gamble and he's not on it he's tied the six up Chua is going to get back to the table to thin the three ball on the left side and try and find cover behind the seven ball. We well, could just see his eyes glance over to that area. He'd like to just run that three up near the five as well. He's overrunning. He's not left a pot, but he's clearly left a piece of that ball. Now he must be so grateful for the six and nine being clustered up, Ajit. Mm, 
what's he got here? I know Capito was disappointed in his safety. Rightly so. You can see from that lovely camera angle all the balls he could have hid behind. But I suppose sat in his chair, he's got to think he's a strong favourite to get another shot in this rack. Uh, I don't see any attacking options that Johan's face with here. Is there a cross bank on though? If there is, I don't know if he can hold the cue ball up towards the top. So... I think maybe the cross bank is on. Maybe the double hit is there as well. Anyway, we'll see what Chua comes up with. He's the one who's behind the shot. Doesn't look easy to get safe as well. Yeah, what he's done there is he's trying to find the top rail. Use the eight as a stopper to block the pot. Even if he didn't achieve that, he will have known getting the cue ball on the top rail would mean Capito can't get back for the four. So he's just biding a little bit of time. Do you think the six and nine cluster affected his decision? I think maybe helped it helped his decision as well. Capito's trying to get the cue ball back over to this left side. Bump this. Oh, he's trying to play thin. I thought he was going to play that fuller off two rails back out near the five. Right, it's worked out well for him. Johan's face with a kick shot here on the three ball. I think nobody kicks the balls better than the Filipinos in the world. Yeah. Kicking into an area where he feels the percentages are stacked on his side. He seems to be not too happy with that ball. Doesn't look like he's left the pot, does it? It's hard to see from that camera angle for us, but I don't think he's left the pot. He can obviously see a little bit of the three ball. Yeah, there you see, you can see that little edge. But I think Chua should be happy with the outcome. Do you think he would consider playing a shot? Kicking on the short reel first and yep. setting the cue ball up. Yeah, it's an option. It's definitely an oh, option. Looking at it right now. Because he knows if he sends the three into that side rail or even glances the seven, he's going to come back. Now, I've got a question for you. Do you prefer the shoot the shoot out or do you prefer the sudden death rack? I prefer the sudden death rack. Yeah, this is exactly why. We're seeing both players play shots. We're seeing the game, the kicking, the safeties. Yeah. The pressure. And the drama here just speaks for itself. Yeah, the one rail kick. That's yeah. exactly what you call, Gabriel. That's exactly what he played. You're going to make a good commentator. This is always a tricky shot, Gabriel. Oh. Yeah, and the double kiss was there. I think what Johan was looking at was an attacking safety where he would send the tree ball up and let the cue ball break up the six in nine cluster. Yeah, when the full distance and the object ball's touching or nearly touching the rail, you do see that double hit. The six and the nine have been broke out a little bit, but I think the six is still tied up. I still don't think it pots in that bottom right. That's going to be for a later date anyway. Capito can see an edge. But this has got to be thin. If he hits this thick, the cue ball will run towards the six and nine and may bump them out. So this is a thin one. Six balls good. Oh, what a shot. That brilliantly. What a shot that was. It's another pressure on Johan to come up with a good kick shot on the tree ball. 
Yeah, and he's trying to hit the bottom side of the three as we look at it. Looks like he can go one rail. Yeah, I think he's going one rail. And honestly, I favour him to get a very good outcome from this kick shot. So let's watch where the cue ball is. He's trying to hit below the three. Oh, yeah, it was always going to be on. Wasn't playing that, but he will have known if he doesn't quite hit the bottom of the three, there's a chance he can make it in the side. The bank shot's on, you know. The bank shot go, goes past the eight. I think he's hiding that up now. Well, I mean, I'm not saying it's the right shot or the wrong shot, but it goes. He can also swing the cue ball round, get it towards the seven. But where does the four ball go? So then you're relying on the cue ball. Yeah, he's just looked at the bank. It goes. These pockets are swallowing the balls up if you catch that right inside rail. He knows if he makes the bank, the five passes the eight. There's, there's a bit of value in it. There's definitely value. You may as well go down fighting. You play the safe and hit it wrong. You lose. Bank shot coming up for Chua. Oh, he's oh, hit it he's so hit bad. Oh, he's made an eight ball instead. But he's fluked the eight. But at least... It's not a fluke where the four ball's gone over the pocket and he can't miss. At least for Capito's sake, Chua's still got to come with another big shot. He's now trying to use the six ball. Doesn't want this four to go in. Oh, now we've got fun and games, ladies and gentlemen. We have got fun and games. How do you hit the four? Can he see the left side of the rail to spin it two? I don't think he can. And can he get the cue ball jumping over the nine quick to try and play a jump kick shot? This is difficult. The six now goes in both corners as well. He is in an absolute world of trouble. He's got to be careful about hitting the four ball a bit too thick because any sort of contact on the thick side of the four ball will send the cue ball into the center pocket. Now, I don't know what he's like with the bridge. He could use the... Well, I'm saying he could use the bridge. I was thinking he could bridge over the nine, go three to four rails, but maybe he can see enough of the cue ball with the bridge, actually. Yeah, that's what he's looking at now. Going off the bottom rail, just before left centre, off the top, pocket the four in the side. Maybe that's his only option. Swerving the cue ball, or oh, he's missed it. Or has he broken up the... Oh, he's made a new cluster on the oh sixth ball. Oh, my <laughs> word. Have you ever seen anything like it? It was so hard to hit the four ball. He missed it. He would have thought he's lost the match. But that little glimmer of hope may just have kept him alive. Chewers at the table. He's got ball in hand. I think he's going to take a gamble. Yes, exactly where he's putting the cue ball there. He's just wondering where he wants it from position to the four. Don't worry, he's not going to pop the five now. He knows. He's just wondering if he can get the cue ball there off the position, can he break the six out? Does he look like he's eyeing up the five-nine combi this time? You like the combination <laughs> shot, don't you? You're going to have to get If you want to make it as a pro, you're going to have to get it out of your head. <laughs> Gabriel, stop chasing combos, kid. No, seriously, maybe he will play for the combo. With the six and seven tied up, is it? You might. I would not be playing for a combo. Yeah, this is the shot for me. <laughs> He's guaranteed to get an angle off that shot. Yeah. 
And it's all about breaking these balls out. Now, there is a way to break these balls out to give yourself a higher percent of a shot. If he goes into the six full, he can play the six in the top left pocket. He can play it in the top left pocket. That is good enough. He's landed on it in the side. He's got to be delighted. What a final rack we have been treated to here. So to all those pool fans out there who prefer to shoot up, maybe after this match you'll want to think again. What drama we have had here. Gabriel, this is your first time commentating, and what a treat what a you shot. have been let to here. What a brilliant game we've been watching. There's the concession. What a final rack. What a match. It's Johan Chua who wins 11 racks to 10. He is the first player through to the semi finals. Capito, you played your part in a fantastic match, but it's Chua who advances through to the semi-finals. Coming up at 2 p.m.